Okay, so that didn't take too long. But we have work to do. One, anytime that you're in topology land, you produce meshes and you put them together in subtools, well, something happens, it gets really big. Uh, to check this out, you can use preview to see if you can see the entire object. See in here, I cannot. This will lead to problematic things. So unify it. And it should work out a little bit better for you. See how it now it fits inside the window. Once I hit move or frame or something like that, it fits. This is anything out here will have problematic things. I'll just go into that. Always check this whenever you're producing a part using topology, anything. Always check this. If it not, unify it. And if it's in subtools, well, you have to combine it to unify it together. If you unify it to separate subtools, you're going to be doing some work. Trust me. Okay, that's one thing that I had to kind of point out. And after it's unified, I save. And now I can do some other stuff to this. Notice they're still in groups. Everything's still the same way you left it. It's just one subtool. So what I'm going to do is make the handle only visible and hold control, click anywhere, control shift anywhere, and then I'm going to inverse that mask. Now a few things you should know. The move tool can move this around. The move elastic tool destroys things. Okay? Another bug within ZBrush. So don't use the move elastic tool when you have combined items. And I think it has a lot to do with having symmetry on too. But you can blend these together. Another thing is, what's nice about having them all like this, I can set pivot and all the pivot points match across the item now. Just get used to doing this right here where you're inversing the mask and controlling just the, the one tool at a time. So my job here is just to kind of make my brush really big and form this up so it makes sense. And I can use the move tool if I wanted to. Make sure you snap it first and make sure you turn off symmetry. Okay, now it shouldn't have broke symmetry at all because you moved it. Symmetry should be okay. Yep, it is. So there we go. That That's nicely blended with this form now. And that means when I up the levels, it should look a lot better. Okay, and to do that, I go up here and I start the process of seeing if better is get better. Now I wouldn't move it too much at a higher level. You can move it just a little bit, but I wouldn't get too greedy. There we go. That looks so much better. Okay, so now I clear that mask out. And I'll hide these things. just so I can get to the blade and then mask the blade off and inverse it. So the blade, you know, I want to make it so it's dipping down a little bit more so that blood groove kind of flows into it a little bit better. So I'll do that at a very, very low rate and move that down. That's so much better. That's a, such a sweet sword. Okay. Sorry. Um, one more thing for my portfolio that nobody ever gets to see just about. I'm a, one of those modelers that model something and let it rot in their hard drive. <laughs> so that's a very bad thing. But what am I going to do? Um, I'm not, I don't want to go into the industry. I like what I do. I like teaching. So... 
one of these days I gotta take it and make this just composition of all the stuff that I've made but pretty much a lot of the stuff I made is you know I, I wrap it up in some kind of video lesson too so I guess you get to see my work in a different way uh, clear that out uh, one thing that you have to kind of watch is the fact that these two forms have some deformation on them so what will happen is if I produce a normal map, these could clash. So I want to kind of make them a little bit thicker just for that normal map. Here, I could sharpen this if I wanted to. Let's sharpen that up. Whoa, not that, not that tool. too sharp. I want it sharp on the tip. But real swords, you know, they weren't always so they were sharp, but they weren't so sharp. A lot of the piercing swords. So I'm just gonna kinda go over here and just, just sharpen it up a little bit using the smooth tool. And I'm happy with that right there. I'm just smoothing that out a little bit. Have it flow right into the blade. And certainly you could do goofy things to this blade now. I mean, really, I can make, uh, you know, I could go down in levels and say, well, maybe I want it to puff out a little bit, you know. You know maybe you want to do one of these numbers to it. There we go. That looks good. If you're going to do things like that, you should match all the the parts though. You know, like if you have such a change as that, maybe you should have something that matches that over on this side. I liked how it was before. It was nice and clean. Yeah. All right. So now what we're going to do is produce some maps for it. Just to kind of prove how all this adds up in the end. Okay. So in the next video, I'll produce a normal map and throw it in GoZ and see what it looks like in Maya. So join me then.